and the eye, Waves, Dante. These are all network protocols specifically tailored towards audio and video productions. IP is really important for audio and video these days, which means that you actually really need to have a good network in order to have a good production. And I don't know about you, but I'm definitely not a network specialist. So I wanted something that is easy to understand and easy to, uh, to uh, configure without the need of having very much in-depth knowledge. And that's why I bought this Netgear product right here. And we're going to talk about it in today's Tech Condo. Let's get started. Welcome to Tech Condo. My name is Petra Verbruggen, and typically uh, we're live on Saturday, but this time around we're actually pre-recorded. So that is the reason why it's a little bit more diff diff different than normal. Uh, so I cannot really say hi to you at the moment, but I'm sure you are here live and I will warmly welcome you for uh, checking out this uh, video. Uh, if you have any comments or questions during this video, please go ahead and write them down in the comments below. Uh, or alternatively, if you have specific questions about the network gear or video or audio, then you can also use the Calendly link that I will be talking about at the end of the show uh, for uh, for your information. Indeed. So let's start our let's start to talk about this. By the way, this is live recorded because. Yeah, I hate editing, <laughs> but anyway, this is a, a Netgear uh, a switch that I that I purchased, and it is a part of the M four two five zero line. And before I'm going to show you this uh, system right here in depth, let's go ahead and go very quickly to the website of Netgear to show you a little bit around what this is all about. So it is an M four two five zero series switcher so as you can see below you've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven different systems in this uh, switcher lined up and it's all specifically tailored towards av over ip and it works like a charm with uh, hd content but also for cape content um yeah so like i said uh, video transmissions over ip is really aimed for that. It also has a very specifically tailored uh, uh, weapon interface to make it easier for you to work on. Well, this is a little bit of a closer look at what it looks like. And of course, I will show you mine in just a bit. Uh, and these are all of the different uh, systems that you have. You have with PoE, without PoE, with uh, 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 um, fiber without fiber you have a lot of different uh, uh, systems here as you can see some of them have only uh, like like maybe uh, a bit of a, a PoE but others have a lot of PoE uh, power um, have 480 watts for example 300 watts 1k watt that is really a lot uh, but there are also that are smaller than that or even don't have it. But this is the big Kahone, 41 gigabyte ports, but uh, mine is uh, just eight ports and um, yeah, really uh, interesting uh, uh, system nevertheless. Um, I really, really, really like this, the, the, the whole uh, setup if it comes to this Netgear product. I'm gonna show them to you again. So this is the, the top of the system. So it, it shows a really nice Netgear logo. Of course, you don't see that if you have that in a rack, but you will also not see the following, which is this what, what you see right here. So right here, the first three uh, connectors that you see here are actually connectors that are all related to uh, administrating this uh, network switch the oob port for example shows you the audio video uh, um, interface that we'll be talking about in just a bit next to that you have a console output and you've got an usb c uh, uh, output as well or input as well next to that you see eight uh, uh, ports that are all pue connected every port that you see right here uh, is 30 watts maximum 
So 30 watts of power per port that you see right here. And all eight have that possibility. Uh, the Burdock sticker is something that I put out myself, of course. And then I have two additional ports that are not PoE, but still are fully fledged network uh, 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 ports. So you can still use them, for example, for your laptop, which is definitely the way that I'm gonna use it. And, the, and then the last two ports are SPF ports, which are like direct ports that's to, so that you can connect this port, uh, switcher to another switcher, which I will have a second one. <laughs> so you will see that in just a bit what I mean, why I am uh, configuring it in a certain way. Um, and uh, that is the way that it looks like. And of course, uh, at the very end, you have this uh, uh, power uh, connector. And uh, I actually added the 240 watts myself to indicate that that is the maximum that this machine can handle which is a lot anyway that is typically what you see on all network switches but what is really cool about this network switch is the front because typically this is not uh, there but this front really looks really nice so let's show that to you so here you see all the ports again one through eight with two lights one to show active activity and the last one the blue one which is the, the second one will show you if uh, it actually is requiring PUE or power over ethernet. Then you've got nine and 10, which is just data. And 11 and 12 is SPF, also data. And then on this side, you actually have additional ports, which I'm actually not using. So it's a little bit out of scope of this uh, video. It does come with fans, as you can see, uh, three on each side. But uh, I have to admit, it's quite quiet and you can actually also control your fans to make it even more quiet or extra loud if you want to have all the power in the world. So that is the full rundown of the switcher. Now, in all fairness, I could easily just put it on, on, on the bench and uh, show you how you could connect your uh, computer and a Burdock Play, for example, like I did uh, uh, a week ago. Um, but you can also, uh, you don't need to know that, you already know that everybody these days has a switcher. So I'm gonna skip that, but I'm gonna uh, now talk a little bit about the audio interface. So I actually created a video up front. I also to make it make it a little bit more fast for you and this is uh the the next video is really the audio video web interface so let's go ahead and show that to you this is the port that you can find the audio video interface on the oob port and uh, you fill in uh, admin and a password of your own choosing uh, i have already uh, put in something else than the, the standard and this is what it looks like. So you see uh, a plethora of different uh, informations. Here you have the product uh, name, you see the product model, my specific model. I actually already added the firmware uh, later uh, earlier today. And uh, you see the OBB port, but you can also provide a system name, which makes it really handy to figure out what it is. So I'm adding Tech Condo. Um, this is just a stupid uh, remark. Burdock, Tech on a Burdock, I like that as a, as a good uh, name. So basically everything that you see here is gonna, uh, uh, on, the, on the system will be Burdock. The CPU load is quite intensive, but actually it's getting less. And here you can also see where you can add the fan or change the fan configuration. Talking about the added values and network profiles, it has outer trunks, so you can have uh, more than one switcher connected to each other. You have PTP resistance timestamping. I have no clue what it is, just adding it uh, as, as that. Uh, the first eight are PUE switchers. That's the reason why you have that lightning port right there. The next two are not, and the last three two are SPF ports to connect the two uh, switchers. Then below that, you see a lot of uh, 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 templates, audio, Dante, QSIS, Lightning, Shure, uh, Sonos, video, of course, NDI, and also the Wave Sound Grid is just added. Uh, but we're interested in the video NDI 5 by uh, Dante, QSIS, and this is the one that I'm actually going to configure by hitting this uh, cogwheel. And then I'm just going to select the ones that I want to have on my uh, profile, and those are actually all of them. Of course, the PoE because of the cameras, etc., but also 9 and 10 because I want to add my laptop, for example, uh, to the mix as well. 
Next to that, I want to provide a network name. Well, NDI sounds to be good. VLAN is just what you want. I will just add 10 or 20 or 30, and I will want to give it a nice color. I love purple, as you know, so I'll just add purple. And I want it to act as a VLAN router, uh, so that's the reason why I'm switching that on. I make sure that this uh, is set to static. My IP address is 192.168.1.1. And subnet mask is already uh, pre-filled uh, pre and the DHCP server, uh, I want to switch on because I want it to provide a DHCP. The default router is 100.1, the same as the VLAN IP address. The DHCP pool starts with 12254 one, and the lease time is only 240 minutes. I'll just add 960 for the sake of it. But the DHCP server pool start, I also want to change because I want my routers to have 101, 102, 103, etc. So let's make it 11 to make sure that that possibility remains for the near future. I am ready with this. I think that is okay. I'm gonna hit apply. And once I do that, it will give you me this warning. Uh, that's okay. I'm not gonna go on the internet with this uh, system. Uh, and you see everything is successful. Brilliant, but you don't. You have to. Don't forget to add this save button right here, because otherwise it's not going to be active for the system. So now the configuration is active and ready to go. So with this, I mean, I can now be rest assured that the network is fully NDI five compatible. It is connected in a way that the packages have the right size, the, the underlying protocols are correctly set, and I don't even have to know how everything is connected to each other, which I find to be very, very nice because I have no clue about networking. Yes, I am part, of, I, I, I have a day-to-day -day job in the IT business, but networking is definitely not my uh, cup of tea. I have no clue about it at all. So anyway, so what did I do now? Of course, you saw that I actually added those bird dogs right uh, last uh, week. Um, so, but those are not PoE. So they're just connected and that's that's fine. However, if you want to add, for example, the uh, bird dog P120s or the P100s, then those have actually a PoE. So they actually are using that budget, that 240 watts of budget that I have on, that, on, on my switcher right here. Um, which is kind of like an issue, right? Um, but how much is that? How much does a specific component actually use? Would be really cool if I could be able to see that. And that's exactly what you can do in the AV uh, web interface as well. So that's actually actually another uh, uh, movie that I have. So let's add that to the mix and show that to you right about now so again log on to the uh, to the portal and but now let's go to the um power over ethernet tab and this is where you will see that i'm actually having six watts of power this is a ptz optics camera without using the motors and well it's actually 5.9 watts to be honest it's on port three and it's type class three and going up again uh, yes, 240 watts. That's the that's the main power, and six watts is what it what the system has in store. Note that if you look very closely, it has a blue line, and here you have more information about the unit value HD corporation, and it's using six watts. The port type is copper, and it is a, a thousand full. And this is one is is not PoE. This is actually the computer itself. It is zero watts of PoE, and uh, that's basically it. Um, the, the the system that I used was a PTZ optics uh, camera that was only consuming six watts, but be aware, it was just switched on. It was not doing anything. It was not using any motor at that time. If I would have been using the motor, that six watts could increase to twenty watts very very quickly. So that is reason why you be have to be very careful what you choose. Now to be honest, I very purposely bought this one right here because it can actually handle 30 watts per port which means that the full PoE plus protocol can be used 
that is really interesting because I don't really have to think about it. But I am a, a nerd, so I want to know what is going on anyway. Um, but be aware that those six watts can easily go to 20 watts. And my rule of thumb is don't pass past 80% full because of that thing that you don't know what's going to happen. So have enough bandwidth for, uh, for that. Well, that's all that I had in store for you today. It's a quick one to today. Uh, of course, it was not live. However, um, I did record it live. As you can see, I'm still trying to figure things out. <laughs> uh, if you like this kind of content, go ahead and subscribe to this channel to, and hit the bell icon so that you get notified for future content. And if you need more help, I mean, help on a very personal level, I also have a Calendly link and that's this one right here. Uh, so go ahead, go to calendly.com slash taekwondo and this is where you can either find uh, a 30 minute consult, 60 minute or even a two hour consult. So I think for everybody, I have something that is of interest. So I would highly, highly suggest to look at that for, uh, for future reference. Thank you so much. Next week, I will not be here live, uh, still not, uh, but I will be back on the last Saturday of the month of May. The last Saturday of the month of May, I will be alive back in the Netherlands. So, um, well, well, at least now you know I'm not, in the, not even in the Netherlands. <laughs> have a good one. Have a great, great day. See you around. And don't forget to uh, write down those comments. Bye-bye. Eh?